All right, the neighbors just gave me this little four horsepower Briggs & Stratton vertical residential pressure washer. Uh, right off the bat, this was the original output on the high pressure side. And you can see that it's cracked all along there. So the, it's been frozen. I'm just hoping, beyond hope, that the pump wasn't frozen. But that's kind of, this might be the low point in the system. We don't know. So, when we weren't looking, I just took a little bit of, same gas, it's old, the gas is pretty old. I guess I should show you that. Excuse me. But it looks clean, but it's just old. There. And the pump is a 19, uh, sorry, 2019, I'm getting old. 2006, it was made in 2006, and I don't think it's got 10 hours on it. It's got uh, 13 years of sitting in, a, in an unheated garage, I think. That's okay, I'm not being sarcastic. I mean, they were nice enough to give this to me, right? So what I did, once we get this back on, there we go. And we're there. I don't, I don't know if it'll start or not. I, I did squirt some. I tilted it sideways and I squirted some pressure, some carb cleaner into the bottom nozzle. I'll show you that right now. Sometimes you can get away with this. I squirted it right into that very bottom hole. Not as far as I've gone. I'll do it again. Because it didn't. I yanked on it ten times before and it wouldn't start even with the primer. I did that and I tilted it this way so it would squirt better. Sometimes that's all it takes to uh, release a little bit of goo. So that is step one. Step two is to get that really old gas out of there. I don't know how much is in it. Yeah, I spilt a little bit. <laughs> Not bad though. It's actually, the gas is burnable. It's just really old. Okay, so let's get some fresh gas in there. And I'm going to do what I usually do and stick a rag down in that tank to soak up the rest. And I got quite a bit there. One more. Surprised it's running. Now I just hope the pump wasn't hurt when it froze. I'll wash my hands right after this. Oh, you, you guys aren't getting any of this. Don't! Well, a little bit. <laughs> Let's get some more. Let's get a new rag. That'll soak up more. I used to try and get cheap on these on these uh, shop towels, but they're only two dollars a roll. And they are the best, right? Okay, I think we're getting somewhere right now. Still a little bit. Not bad though. Put some real gas in it. Quarter of a tank will do. We don't know what we're doing, right? We're going to take it out and just give it a hokey pokey test. 
water in, water out. And this gas cap is just a nightmare. Okay. I'm going to leave the air filter off for just now and we're going to take it outside. So let's just meet you out there. Okay, I've got my personal hose on there and we'll see how that goes. I'm sure it's still leaking from the unloader. Now we might be able to spray some water. Okay, well we're spraying water now. So let's start her up and see what happens. at all okay so now is there an adjustment or is it shot looks like it's turned down so much that uh, it's not going to do anything and there's washers missing too or it's o-ring so what do you do Bruce you start working on this now or do you leave it for later? I'm going to tinker with it, as you would know. Turn off the water. Okay, I'm going to shut you down. The, I'm going to disconnect the hoses and work on that bypass valve. I don't have a lot of confidence now. Just a small adjustment on the pump, on the unloader, I just loosened it off, we still have flow, one more go. going to go into storage for a little while. So there is an outside chance that I can take that bypass off of there and have a look and maybe it will become unstuck. We don't know but it's uh, it's uh, just letting water through right now. It's a cute little setup though eh? Four horsepower pressure washer made by Briggs & Stratton. All right, my friends, there we are. The unloader's on the lift. Or, sorry, talking about unloaders. The, wa the pressure washer's on the lift. And I'm just gonna take out the unloader. And all that is, is we just put a screwdriver in there and tap that out. And you just have to be, make, make sure that it's not gonna shoot across the room when it happens. So if I can put you right here, hopefully you will be close enough to witness this. We'll just change the angle of this do hummer. And we'll just, okay, so I'm just taking this U-bolt off right here. Oh, it's almost loose. It's almost like somebody's been in here before. Not me. Okay. So we'll just grab this rag. Okay. And now I'm going to pry this out. I've done this before. Watch your eyes. I'm just prying each spring, right? And it's coming. It's loose too. It's scary. There. Mm. Now I'm going to wipe inside there to see if there's any rubber damage. And I might have an old unloader laying around here somewhere. Wouldn't that be cool? Okay, I don't see any rubber damage down there. That's just a quick glance though. Now let's look at this. 
this is definitely in a snafu situation but the plunger still works I wonder well that's definitely something I'm looking for something simple right uh oh well that water could come from anywhere when you have when you're working on pumps you get water fever hydrophobia okay now I am uh, just taking apart this unloader because it's got a bent piece and I don't have spares. I went through my pump parts. I am going to start getting better on pumps. I'm kind of a mission this year and next. The problem is is that they're they run at 1200 RPM or, or they run I'm sorry they run at 12 1200 PSI to 2500 PSI or more and they're made out of soft metal because they're they're almost a inexpensive commodity. Okay, so here's the washer that's causing us the grief. Metal washer. But I think that can be flattened in the vise or on the anvil. So I'll be right back. Okay, here it is. It looks pretty deformed. I think it was hammered in. Nonsense. <laughs> okay. You know what I'm trying to do now? I'm trying to replace these two washers. It's not rocket science. All right, I'm going to be right back. I've got two new O rings. I don't think they're the right diameter. Putting a little silicone on them. Give them some slippity doo dah. I'm going to see if I can get this in here. It is worth a shot. I do think this one washer is too big. I think this one's fine. I'm going to dig that one out and see if I can find a smaller one. Nothing's easy. The big thing with small engine stuff is just taking your patience with you. Ooh, that might, you know what, that's pretty thin. But that looks pretty much like what we had, hey? What do you think? That just might do it. Oh. I think this. I think this washer goes down over here. Okay. It's exactly right. I had it wrong, baby. Now I should, I shouldn't rush and I should, uh, there we go, that fits on there, and that fits on there like that. 
Perfect. Perfect. Wouldn't that be something if this worked? I'd laugh my head off. Then I would go buy a new unloader. With a proper set of O-ring boxes, you can repair a lot of stuff. Here, there's nothing left. And that washer's been cleaned up so that and the bash marks are on the other side. Okay, a little bit of more silicone. Now let's just see if this fits in here before you run out of battery. Boy, the battery's been good today. I'm gonna get a something to tap that. Socket! Socket, socket! Will that work? Maybe that'll work. Yep. Well, I got a hunch that's gonna leak. That went in pretty easy. I'll be back. I'm not going to take you with me, with me this time. Okay, my friends, we'll just bring this back here a little bit. Uh, oh, are you okay? That's why you buy good cameras when you have a YouTube channel. Okay, so we are going to just turn up. Those washers worked in the unloader. So now I'm just turning up the pressure a little tiny bit. So you got to... Just hold your tongue right. My love, could you hold this just like that? Oh, okay, it's okay. Thanks. Oh, I see. I won't be alone, I don't think. Okay, now. I want to turn that. Oh, that feels like it's got a little more meat to it now. I think that's probably my. Okay, turn that, tighten that up. Good, thank you. Just remember, you saw it first on Bruce Pender TV. I don't have the little table for you to sit on. Funny when you work on pumps, you gotta go outside and get a hose, and then you end up with every single tool that you own outside. So let's see how this goes. Well, I'm stunned. Thanks for staying with me on this one, guys. It's going to be a weird video. But now we now we can move forward on this guy. All right. The next thing is is this wand will not seal even when the handle is the, is as far forward. I can just give you a little quick. Oh my God, I do this. I can't believe it. I'm going to give you a little demonstration. There should be no leaking when it's this way and full blast this way, right? And, it's, and I can blow through it. Okay, so the only thing we can do is to take this apart and have a look. And I'm not fooling around. It's plastic, but I'm taking it apart, not putting it together. I have 
no idea whether I can fix this or not. It would be a, a huge leap forward for mankind, that's for sure. There we go. Now the this is the whole the whole enchilada right here. Well, who knew? came up with that one? I think it's a sticky ball valve. So, pliers for sale or rent. Here we go. Here we got. Oh, sorry about that, you guys. Oh my gosh, I did it again. So, here we got. I just took this out of the handle like this, right? You can blow through here and it comes out here. But there's a little ball valve and spring right there on the end. So, let's just see if we can manipulate this back and forth a bit. Ooh, a lot came right out. <sighs> Nothing. So we're, we're, we're getting there already. I think, the, I think it was just a little bit of dirt. So now, how far do I go? That's a seal. I think I'm just going to uh, pull this out. Take a little carb cleaner and squirt it in there. Carb cleaner, this stuff gets carboned up too, guys, because it's such high pressure. Be right back. So, so when I took this little pipe out of here, pipe, plunger, I can't blow through it anymore, eh? But I can suck on it so it'll travel one way. Now, before I take this apart, I'm just gonna clean it and not get too complicated. I'm going to put this back in. I don't want to stick my mouth on there. Hmm. I think I have something. Or do I? Yes, I do. I can put this on here and blow. Ah, this is a broken handle. Okay, so that I can blow through right now. And when this lifts up, the, the water pressure should push this back down. Yeah, now it's sealed. How about a little drop of soap down in there? I mean, Lord, that's probably what caused it to gum up in the first place. <clears throat> what do I got? Well, I tell you, soap is soap. And then they add the color to it, so I'm just going to throw a little bit of Fantastic down there. I know how I can test it. I'm gonna use a little air. Now I can put my mouth on it at least because it'll be a little bit cleaner. I did it. I can't blow through it at all now. Isn't that fun? And I'm going to stick the plunger in it. Duh. Here we go. I washed it with uh, Fantastic's daily household daily cleaner. Blow a little air in there to facilitate the comparison to high pressure water and as far as my three ounces of pressure my mouth can generate that'll do it now when I push this in it should leak again we'll lock it with the air okay now we'll see if we got any leaks I think it's going to work. And a 
leave the hose connected. Maybe. <laughs> All right. Okay, where's all my little screws? Quite a few. Gotta try it, right? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So this is something that a small engine shop would never tackle. <laughs> Till they get home that night. I'm going slow. I'm learning how to use this thing. Took me a while. Well, we're going to go outside now and we're going to find out if this works. All right, working on the pump. There's something I want to do. And you guys might be able to get a good look at it. Right there, on the end of the uh, bypass, right there, I cut that off with the grinder because it was broken. It, it was a slotted screwdriver and one half was broken off. So I'm going to attempt to cut another one right in there like that. So first thing I'm going to do is get my hokey pokey safety glasses on that I can wear over my glasses so I can see. And all I want to do is cut a slot in that. Working! That's all it is. That was quick. I'll give you a close-up shot of that. See that? So now, if I can reach it, yes, we can adjust it. Like that. Bigger screwdriver, maybe. Like that. Sideways look. Front ways look perfect. That's all I wanted to do. Okay, here we go. Got a mild leak here. I don't even know if it is or not. But it does turn on and off. This is an adjustable one. And uh, let's just... We are recording. Yep. Let's fire that. This other one, my homemade guy leaked a little bit. It's still good for testing. So now I've got a good hose. I'll just stir it up. I think I'm going to turn the output up just a little bit. It's working pretty hard. I'm going to take it back just a tad. And I'm going to lock that little nut washer, lock washer onto the, onto the bolt. I'll, I'll do that while you're watching here. Okay, we need this in the 8 millimeter. Whatever happened to that. Right here. Come with me. Okay. So right there. On the bypass. Unloader, bypass, blah, blah. I'm just going to lock this little 8 millimeter nut down now. I'm happy with the pressure. And of course, one last test. We'll find out if she's ticklish.
Okay, let's see if this leaks just on the city water pressure. This will squirt a bit. No, not much. I'm thrilled. Okay, now we're gonna go change the oil in it. Hi guys. Well, I'm back. And I just did something really dumb. First, I'll explain. Do you remember when I first started working on this little pump right here? Right there. Uh, it had a brass tube on the output. And during my work, that brass tube leaked. I found out from the neighbors that gave me this pump that a local repair shop uh, put that on there because the original one had split. And I did show you that. It was like this, this tube right here. This just screws off. And it was split. And it actually wrecked the hose too. This was the original output on the high pressure side. And you can see that it's cracked all along there. So the, it's been frozen. Because the, the hose must have been attached while it's split with the ice in it, right? <clears throat> but it didn't wreck the pump. So now, I got everything working. I rebuilt the uh, unloader. And then I decided, okay, I'm going to put that brass tube back on. Because I had the aluminum just for temporary, just to get things working. And uh, this is what I did. Snap the unloader in half. So that's how weak that steel is, eh? It was, I believe, something. Yep, something like that, right? It was like that. And I just bumped it with a wrench and pew, popped off. And I did such a good job of rebuilding it with the washers and the silicone and the the adjustment and then I cut that little groove in there for the screwdriver. I was so pleased with myself and if I'd have left it alone I would have been fine. <laughs> but you know me, I got a muck with it, right? <clears throat> so on the pump, this brass tube is the one that caused me all the grief because this tube was in that was in place of that so we'll anyway we may have to go back to that tube or not but I took this brass tube off there wasn't any there wasn't any Teflon tape in it there was nothing it does have the right size hole for the hose to go into right so the idea was was sound but while I was screwing this in I snapped off the edges of the unloader oh! so uh, I bought a new unloader. Now let's give you the number right now and then we'll open it up. Can you see this? Kit unloader 190594GS. So, uh, there we go. Let me just put this other piece back. I might need this yet, eh? So I hope, hopefully this does not leak, and we'll get a knife, and we'll open this, well I ordered it online, so it's, it's probably mine, mine now, stuff, stuff online is not hard to return, it's just a pain in the neck. So now you're looking at the pump, let's go back here and uh, open this unloader up and compare it to the other one. It's, uh, it's all hidden inside the bag, so I think they want you to open it. <laughs> oh, there it is. Looks kind of the same. And they're preset, they say. And if it's running respectably, I'm not going to... Uh, I'm not going to ch change the pressure on it. I'm just going to accept it as a life. Introductions. Well, that's exactly how I installed it. Little guy, little guy, where are you? And I like getting these little bags because I use them for parts. Ooh, and they sent a spare O-ring too. Okay, let's see what this one says. 
Here's a standard screwdriver. To plug, remove the old unloader, apply a layer of old lube to the old rings and seal the new unloader. Did they send it? No, they didn't send the... Okay, well I got the old the O-ring luber. Hey, this is kind of nice. They sent two two O-rings. I can now I can compare with the O-rings I carry in my little pouch. But anyway, let's just put those in there for now. Let's get that silicone. I'll be right back. So anyway, that was nice of them to send me this little uh, the extra O-rings. Hey, eh? I call them washers. I believe in the video. And all of the pump guys are probably cringing. But this is old ring lubricant. Okay, we're going to need the, the old pin that holds it in. So, apply it. Install new unloader. Install the locking pin to unload the housing. And that's it, baby. So come with me. Sure, there's no goo in there. I know how. Ah, water coming out the chute. That's good. Okay, this might have to be tapped in. Or not. We don't know. Yeah, it's gonna have to be tapped in. Oh, I wanna. I want to compare the thickness of the o-ring of the washer uh, it's pretty close this thickness right here sorry it's good so now I'm just gonna get a screwdriver you guys are in the way right Hopefully you're seeing a little bit of that. <clears throat> Not quite. Almost need a, uh, a socket to push that in. Is that what I did last time? It should go. I need another hand coming out of my forehead. Almost. Yeah, it's going. Okay. And that's it. I'll give you a close up look of that now. So there's the U clip, and it just half pounds in. And if you look really close, you can see the edges of that U-clip. There, there. So now we've got two things. We have to test this new unloader. We'll unzoom you. All right. So this cost me 80 bucks, this little mistake, right? But I did, my whole goal this fall is to learn something about to learn more about residential pressure washers because you can't take one into a repair shop and expect them to fix it for what the pump is worth or even like let's just say you got a uh, $450 pump and it's worth $275 running well that's what it's going to cost you or more to get it fixed at a pump one of those pump pressure places or pressure pump places excuse me so I am trying to figure out how to do this by not buying an unloader every time, but by buying, you know, valve kits and stuff like that. <clears throat> so if I can fix a pump for 80 bucks or 100 bucks and sell it for 250 or give it to my kids or something like that, right? That would be cool. So I will be right back now with the hose and uh, clips and all that stuff. We'll see how it goes. Thanks. 
All right. Oh, I need a. I'm going to use a quick connect on the coat on the low pressure side, but on the high pressure side, I'm actually going to test the hose that I'm going to uh, sell with the unit. I don't know what life would be like without channel lock, slip drunk pliers, whatever you want to call them. Okay, we should be able to just connect this up without any leaks. There might be a tiny leak at the end of this on the city pressure, but at uh, 2,000 pounds it doesn't leak. It didn't last time anyway. It's been a few days since I uh, was working on this, right? Good. All right. No leaks under there. No leaks there. That still could be full of air. So let's just take this out to the edge of the garage here. Oh no, it's already spraying. Okay. So let's open up the big garage doors. And we'll get set up for the pump. Must well bring the pump out. Perfect. Are you with me? Okay, so here's our uh, repaired wand. You guys remember me fixing the repaired wand. And it's got an adjustable sprout on it, right? I'll just lay that down on there. No leaks underneath the, the pump, I don't think. That's oil. Start her up. It's been a while. Oh, I just put gas in it. I made sure there was enough gas in it. So, number one, we hope that the loader works, which might need adjustment. And number two, we want that brass pipe to not leak.
no leak. Now let's have a look here. We do have two little leaks. One I think is from the hose, from the soap adapter. No. I don't know where that one's coming. Oh. Let's just turn it upside down for a minute. Oh, there is a small leak from the vent, eh? Well, I tell you, it's a used unit too, right? It's pretty good, you guys. I'm almost tempted to check it to do the different hose and uh, we'll just try a different see how that goes all right now I'm trying it with my hose with the quick connects now we have a small drip off the inlet that's nothing that's probably just this old orange connector right so now we're going to start it up and see what we got are you ready yes let's start it up Interesting. It leaks worse with my uh, quick connect setup here, eh? <sighs> I need three arms. So I'm happy. I'm going to hook it up the old way just, just to put a little few more minutes on it. Works good though. I'm going to turn you off and rehook that other one up and then play. You'll notice I washed my cart while I had that on, eh? Okay, this is a real world test. I've got the other, the original wand that I repaired onto the pressure washer that I repaired. I'll start her up. Check for horrible leaks. And it looks to me like the only leak we got is the one that's coming out of the very tip of this brass piece. I think that's fine. You're going to have water all over the place anyways, right? You know what it is. I'll show you in just one second. It could be just the fact that this washer is getting old. Or O-ring, excuse me. Right? But I've seen, you know, I think my own even leak worse than that. So anyway, got my got a quick wash where Mrs. Pender parks her car. And I'm just gonna squeegee you this off and and I think we're done. I I honestly don't remember if I if I changed the oil on this one or not. I think I did. Anyway, we'll figure that out. Thanks guys. Alright, very typical pump stuff, my friends. I've got my two little O-rings that are the replacement O-rings that came with the unloader and the closest one is a, st uh, is a SAE standard 5 8 by 3 quarter which is this one and the other, pardon me, <coughs> I've had a cold for so long and I can't get rid of it and the other one almost looks like it's going to be lined up on the metric side as a R06 but they're not quite right, eh? So, that's life. 
That's, I find that with pump stuff, it's really pro proprietary. One, two. So I'm going to put this in my filing cabinet. I'm going to put these back in my stock. to go. Now I don't normally sell this kind of stuff, but uh, I think I want to just try and get my money back from this one. I've got about a hundred dollars in parts in it and if I can get, well I'm going to look online, but I think it's worth about 180 to 200 dollars, maybe. And if I can do that, uh, I'm clear sailing. So thanks a lot guys. It, it tested really well. The only leak was on the low pressure side on the uh, once I got everything tightened up with the channel locks, uh, it was just on the low pressure side, depending on how it sat right on that orange clip. Thanks.